get into it. Miss Cheryl's uh, she's feeling better, and I'm, she's going to read our text for us today. morning everyone I just wanted to mention uh, Michelle that spoke about CareNet she's also got some at least I think she has some bottles that we're supposed to take home anyone can take them home put your change in it fill it up if you can and uh, you can put dollars too but <laughs> um, fill it up and then, and then or a check <laughs> and I'm not sure of the date we're supposed to bring back do you know why I think before all the Christmas stuff gets started, we're going to, you can bring it back at any time and, and I'm to be in charge and then I'll make sure they get it. But um, before all the Christmas stuff gets started, we'll, we'll gather them up. So I just wanted to let you all know, not just for the women, for the guys too, if you have any change, you can fill them up. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before I read this is so looking at the word Gentiles, and um, I don't know if you've thought too much about what a Gentile is, but basically for the Jews, a Gentile was anyone who wasn't a Jew. So how many of you does that include? How many of you are Gentiles? <laughs> so we're going to read something about the Gentiles here, and that's why I wanted to make sure you understood that you were included. Um, my voice is a little bit hoarse, but it's almost back to normal. Um, I'm reading in Ephesians 3, 5 to 6, and then we skip a few verses and we go from 10 to 12. And yes, you may stand for the reading. Verses 5 to 6 in Ephesians 3. Which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Partakers of the promise. That's pretty cool. And then I'm going to skip down to 10 and 12 says, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal power that has been realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that we are included in the promise, all of us. All of us, if we've recognized that Jesus died for our sin and accepted him as our Lord and Savior, we are included in that promise. We thank you, Lord, for the promises you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for your word that explains it to us. And we thank you for Pastor Al, as I know he spends a lot of time every week working on what he's going to say to us and praying about it. So we ask you to help him this morning. Bless him. Help him to say the, the words that you're leading him to say. And we pray that our ears would be open and our hearts and our spirits especially would be open. We uh, pray for those that aren't here, those that are sick. We ask you to give them healing. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Last week we stated that, or Paul stated, the proclamation of the mystery. And we got into the first part of Ephesians chapter 3 as we look at the church as a mystery. Uh, people need to know what it is that we're talking about when we hear mystery. And uh, we, we saw that it was stated that the church, bad things happen to the church, but it's not to affect our attitude as far as even though we're going through bad things it shouldn't affect our attitude as far as how we act live and point to jesus and uh, we also saw that how that could possibly cause us to be prideful boastful but we're to do this in a, in a humble and meek way 
uh, you know, we have the answer. We know we've read the, the last page. We, we win in the end, amen? And it could, you know, we could get stuck on just us instead of doing the very thing that Jesus called us to do, and that was to point to the kingdom and God's glory and all these things that we've seen. And today our text, we're going to dig a little deeper uh, into the timing of the mystery of the gospel. Uh, the timing in which that we will see a brief timeline. I say brief. Uh, that could be um, opinions. I, I'm gonna, not going to, all my notes in here, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But I want us to see the timeline between the creation of the world and also when we get to the place that uh, Jesus himself reveals the mystery. It's him that gives out the mystery in the New Testament. So we're going to see that, but then we're also going to uh, see how that uh, we're going to try to comprehend the very nature of the mystery of the gospel and then put, in a, put a big bow on this gift from God and, and also see the reasoning behind the mystery of the gospel. All this being said, I believe that today would be a, we do have some visitors. Uh, I pray that you might go back and look at some of the uh, preceding uh, messages leading up to this as we've been talking about in the, Ephesian, the book of Ephesians. But we have to, um, today is one of those educational days. I want to try to help you understand better. Uh, I like history. Some of you like history. Uh, some people like to get their Bible out and dig. Uh, I like to do that. I like to look for treasure. Uh, but if you're a, I like studying history. I know a couple of you that, that have stated, uh, and I, I know from your notes and how you talk, how you dig in the Word to learn and understand that you might better understand what it is God needs you to know in order to do what it is that he's got you here for. We're all here for a purpose, right? Romans 8, 28, everything happens to the good of those that are called of, of the Lord and are what? Called to his, by his, or for his purpose. So we, we need to understand, and I want us to get that as we think and we hear this word mystery. Mystery means we don't know, and we always put mystery to the the spooky movies and things like that or you like a, a a mystery novel you don't know the answer to the last page or two uh, i i think that sometimes our translation when we wrote mystery we should understand that it was the unknown we couldn't explain it we hadn't been given all of the words to finish the sentence so to speak it's not a mystery as in god wanted to keep it secret from us and I'm going to show you that in this first point uh, in the timeline, how everything that happened from creation until the birth of Christ and even to, through today, God has a sovereign calendar. It all happens according to his sovereign will and in his sovereign timing. Uh, so I want to ask a question today, and what I'd like us to consider is, do I understand the mystery of how and why God uses the church for the gospel? I'm going to say that one more time. Do I understand the mystery of how and why God uses the church for the gospel? I've heard Andy say at a time or two, you know, God uses a crooked stick to draw a straight line. And sometimes I look at the church and how we've gone through time and we get caught on ourselves. We get, we get so wrapped up in the ministry and the work that we're trying to do, even here in Bernalillo at First Baptist Church, uh, but do we lose sight of what God's word, his basic instructions before leaving earth, do we spend time in this to understand the why and how? Why would he use us? Um, and that's a, that's a good question. And, and I believe that if we would get past what we perceive ourselves to be, how does God look at us? As children, right? If we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God looks at us as His children. Now, we are to do the things, we are to manifest the body of Christ. We are to be the church, the body of Christ. So that is the reason why He uses us. And I believe if we see the importance of that and how He's using us, we should do a little work, a little digging, uh, Alistair Beggy constantly says, you have homework, you need to do some work, you need to dig to find out what this means 
So he doesn't expel 20 minutes trying to explain it. And a lot of this I think we need to do a better job at. Me too. And I spend a lot of time in the Word. But I want us to see, and, and on the back of your bulletins is my outline uh, for our visitors' sake. Uh, and you can write down these things, whatever the Lord lays on your heart or whatever. But I want us to see the timing of this mystery. And um, we're going to see it in two parts. But, uh, but starting with verse 5, the first part, it says, Which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations. I got to digging into this and uh, I found myself after about five hours said, okay, that's a lot of information. So what I did was I have taken this and if you're interested, if you're a, a student of the Bible, and I think we all should be, but I made ten copies up here and if we run out I can get more, but I wrote out everything in detail for the most part of what I've, I'm trying to get across in this first point so that I don't have to cover everything, dates and all that good stuff. But it's a handout up here. I have it in Spanish as well, uh, if you would pick it up after. But I'm going to try to skim through this quickly, uh, being we've got so much to do. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apologize now. The battery is going down. Uh, if you'll look at your clock right now, it says 1125. But the clock that I always look at says it's 5 after. So we're going to go by this clock. <laughs> it does. I'm, I, well, actually, it says five after ten so I've got two hours amen <laughs> I think this is God working in this morning okay uh, y'all think I ought to go by this clock or by my watch here on my, my I'm gonna see I'm gonna set this down here but it, it's gonna go black here in a minute so it's not gonna do me any good either so anyway laugh smile we're to have fun while we're doing this amen I always enjoyed classes in, in times when I, I felt a part of and I want you to feel a part of it today. I want you to feel that every Sunday. But especially today because I believe we put too much emphasis on just today instead of how did we get to today. And I think that's why the mystery is so important. And when Paul speaks of it, I want us to dig and understand what it is that he's talking about. Um, the mystery was concealed in the Old Testament. We know that. Uh, but we start out in Genesis 1.1, In the beginning, God created the heavens, plural, and the earth. And I believe it's important that we understand from that creation, picking up there, there's a reason that God starts in the beginning. And if we're going to get to where we are on this day in 2023, we should be able to point back and say, here's where it all began. And have a brief understanding. I'm not saying go into it. Have you ever take, take and put your finger between the New Testament and the Old Testament? Uh, there's more in the Old Testament, isn't there? Well, it covers a lot more time is why. And the more time you cover, the more events that happen, you write down more things. Okay? But here's the thing. We're to know it all. Not just what verse brought us to the Lord, which is important. But we need to know it all. In the beginning. So let's go back to the beginning very briefly. And I'm going to try to do this quickly. My head will be down a lot, so just bear with me. Eyewitnesses of God's beginning from the fall of man to the flood. It's a new start. Uh, but we see that creation to the flood, there was 1,412 years. And what I'm trying to do right now with these dates and times is to help you understand the span. Well, sometimes we think of these two events and they were a long time between them. 1,400 something years is a long time, yes. But it's not that bad. Just ask Ray. He's been around a while. I can pick on Ray. He's a brother, okay? But in that time, we see some figures. And, and first off, Adam, uh, he lived to be 930 years. And if you, we want to talk about why they lived longer, that's another day. You get me to the side and I'll explain all that. Uh, and then we see between creation and where Adam is, is born, and we see that in Genesis 5, Noah was 500 years old when he birthed uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And that was, then we are going to add about 30 years for them to mature. And then we're going to add about 75 years or so to build an ark. So 605 years at the flood. So that all being said, what I thought interesting was is that you have Adam who was there at creation and now we spoke of Noah and their ages. Now, I, I'd never put this together until I dug this up. 
their lives overlap by 123 years. 123 years, Adam and Noah had opportunity to communicate. Do you think they had a conversation? Bible doesn't tell us that they did, but I, I believe they did. I believe that God doesn't ever leave His people and the people that He has chosen for His purpose to be in a pluck out of meaning and just placed out in space. I believe that they did have conversations and all those in between there. I believe there were, there were others there. We think of Enoch. We think of Methuselah. I think that these characters that Noah, as he knew, as he was, as God had said, build me an ark. I'm going to destroy the world. We're going to kind of get a new start to things. Everybody he was able to communicate with. There is a connection. And they were able to tell the story. Yes, Moses wrote it down. But I believe it's important that we understand that God, um, he allowed all this to happen in a sequence of orders. And the overlap still continues. But here's the thing. In all of this, up until the flood, the secret has been mentioned, yet not revealed. It's been talked about. It's been laid out in the plans of God. It's been shown in all of these texts. If you read the first, uh, the Pentateuch, which is most books, first five books of the Old Testament, you can learn all these things. It just takes a little work, a little digging, and you'll find it interesting. But I thought it was interesting that they could have had a... I imagine in 123 years there was a conversation or two. And I believe it's something that we need to understand. But now the flood was a new beginning. The world was covered with water. It all started over. And what we see here is eyewitnesses to God's new seed, a new name, new property, and a new king. And all this takes place, and it starts with Abraham, who lived to happen to be 175 years old. Um... He is the new seed. And we've talked about that, how the Jews come out of Abraham. You're saying this is just a history class. Yes, it is, but we have to get it down how the Jews came to be. And this is the new seed that we talk about, 175 years. Now, here's something. We're talking about overlapping ages and things like that. Did you know that Noah died only seven years prior to uh, Abraham's death? The ages were coming down. They overlapped. I believe there was quite a few conversations between Noah and Abraham. Again, I think God does not pull us out of the line timeline of what God is doing. So how can you connect yourself to these, these characters in the Bible? And we also see a, a name of the people. We see the life of Jacob. Uh, we see how that happens. You can go to Genesis 32, and it says, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. That's how we get the name Israel. So this is key to understand that. Um, also the life of Joseph, one of Jacob's sons. Uh, he, was, he was kind of a type. And we see all these types and pictures of different things that are talking about the very mystery that is about to happen a few thousand years down the road. It all takes time, but they overlap. Uh, I think it's notable to say that uh, in Genesis 50, verse 25, we see that Joseph, even though he was to show a power and, and a, a ruling and how to govern, uh, he was also God's picture of the mystery. And it also, as we see, and he, he made his son's promise, Go, uh, God will visit you, and you shall carry my bones from here. Now, Joseph was in Egypt, the type of the world, uh, sin and the destruction and all that. But as the Hebrew children left, uh, the new seed to go to the promised land with Moses, he said, you take me, and I see this as a picture of the rapture, how God's going to take care of us. Anyway, moving forward 279 years later, the bloodline of the coming king is established. We know who that is, it's King David. And we see all this, we've seen the the the... The seed, we've seen the name and the people, but now we're going to see the property. See, Moses is going to lead them to the promised land that God promised Abraham. This is important that we know these things as Christians. Okay? Um, in 1526, Moses was saved. And, and, you know, you're saying, how do you get these dates? And, and they're all approximate. They're all things. Now, i got a book that helps me. You know me. i got a big library. i got a lot of books. But this was the first... English book of history. It's called Usher's uh, The Annals of the, Annals of the World. 
Uh, and it goes back to creation. And it gives dates. He actually plugged in dates. So it's kind of a cool little book. Uh, so when I say a date, that's where I got it from, that and some of my other books, and put them together. But anyway, that being said, we see how this goes on, and that the property in which was promised to Abraham, but Moses is finally going to go to that promised land. Well, Moses doesn't get to go. Who takes over for him, right? Caleb, Joshua, that's right. The two that stood out, but Joshua and Caleb were the only two out of the original that made it into the, uh, the promised land. So we see that, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but to get to King David to show the power that God intended as a foresight of what Jesus was going to be, and we see this as King David reigns from uh, 1011 to 971 B.C. You can go and read that about in Acts 13. It talks about, uh, but 2 Samuel I want to bring out, uh, <clears throat> when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up an offspring after you who shall come after your body and will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. It wasn't a Jewish king. It was the king of kings. You see how important this is that we understand how we get from a seed, a people, their name, uh, to a property in which it is, but to have a king that rules. And I believe if we look to the Old Testament, we see all this, and from King David until the birth of Christ, all Scripture speaks of this mystery that Paul writes us about. Uh, but it, 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 it's a new seed, a new property, and a new king to come. See, that's the mystery. We don't know who it is. We don't know how it's going to transpire other than using these very names that I've given you today. And how they all in steps of time overlapped, understood the meaning of what God had intended. Sometimes we don't have all the pieces because we don't look for all the pieces. But all the points of that mystery uh, would, be, would be revealed one day and it would be key to the rest of eternity. So the second part of verse 5 says, As it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Revealed. The mystery has now been revealed to the, the apostles and the prophets. And I believe we go back to that phrase, in the beginning, but we're going to jump to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If everything was based on the Word and God, how much do we dig, how much do we do the homework? Now I said it took me five hours and I, I really skimmed. There's a lot of information here. But I, I believe if we would dig, and we'd have a better understanding of who these characters were. And there's a lot of information in each of these lives that the Scripture tells us about that lead and show us the, the, the moving of God in their lives to get to a place that we have a hope. We've got to get Jesus on the scene. You see what I'm saying? We need Jesus to get here. He is the answer. And I'll just add this as a footnote. I'm looking for him to come back to fix things again. But this time he's not coming as a savior. He's coming as a king. His kingdom will be set up on these very, very locations in which we just talked about. So that's important. We know we take the last book and we see how it ties all to the other books. Amen. His throne will be in Jerusalem. His kingdom will be set up there in all the, the different places I don't want to re-preach Revelation, but we know that he's coming back and he will. And guess what? We get to rule and reign with him. But we got to get him here first, right? In the beginning was the Word. See, the mystery is revealed by Jesus. And I said that earlier, but uh, in John chapter 4, starting with verse 23, it says, But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, but the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Well, that makes sense. We all like to worship, don't we? We like to sing. We like to go to church, tell people, hey, I, I went to church this Sunday. But worship in spirit and truth, and how do you know the truth if you don't do the digging to know what God's Word says? That's the truth. And we go on, it says, God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Then the woman said, I know the, that Messiah is coming, He who is called Christ. When He comes... He will tell us 
all things. And here it is. Jesus is going to let the cat out of the bag. He says, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. The answer, the key to all the mystery of the Old Testament is brought forward and gives the answer, an announcement to of all people, an, uh, you know, I appreciate John uh, preaching that a couple weeks ago on, you know, the, the Lord of the Harvest. And he used crooked stick to carry the gospel to the town there in Samaria. And how many were saved? It said the whole city. It was just a buzz about Jesus because he knew all that had happened. He wants us to know what's happened as well. We are his protégés. We are his we are to be like him. And we're to know these things and to move forward that we might share what the mystery was all about. All the writers, all 27 books of the New Testament, Mark, I don't know that he re actually met Jesus. I think he did. Uh, as far as uh, his first-hand results, he knew the apostles. But all the other ones had, had been around Jesus and met him and first-hand in the ministry that was filled with the Holy Spirit and the power that was brought. And we can look at 1 John chapter 5. And this is another reason why I think the Word of God is so important that we get to this and, and understand what we hold in our hands. It's not just my job to read it and study it. It's yours too. Our quiet time should be, Lord, help me understand what it is this is about. I believe in when we read this in 1 John chapter 5, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Hallelujah. And this is the confidence that we have toward Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have request that he, have, uh, he will give what we've asked of him. So when we study the word and we try to understand who Jesus is by the history that we have in the word of God, then we can understand the timeline and actually understand what it is that we are getting to. Not just a book that we read. There's a purpose for it. If there was no purpose in the Word and the history and everything that we read in God's Word, why did He give it to us? Huh? Chew on that for a little bit. There's times I sit there and say, wow, I just don't have time to really dig into that. And I get that little smack in the back of the head by the Holy Spirit and says, really? I think it's time that we learn to study the Word, put the pieces together. It shouldn't be a mystery. The, the title of my sermon, I've got a picture of a puzzle piece. We need to be able to put the pieces together. So when somebody says, why do you have such a hope? You can tell them all the pieces to put the puzzle together to where that you can see what it is. Amen? Amen. There's a timeline involved. There's work to be done. There's, it's not always easy. I can remember when we had our game night and the, the table's still in here and the ladies are still, uh, they're going to finish this puzzle one day. But they're all scratching their head and they're trying to put the pieces all together and they're trying to find the outside borders that contain those pieces. And maybe they're looking at little pictures that show, well, on the box I can see this and I can put these pieces together. Then I can put these pieces together. And there's several little pieces. But at some point they all come together to show a massive picture and all that's involved. Do we understand the timeline and what it takes to get Jesus, the gospel, to where that we can be saved and that we can share today in 2023 that there is a coming king, amen? It's good to know that you're saved, but I think it's better that we point to that he's coming back, amen? We get stuck looking back. He says look forward. So are we doing our part there? That was a lot of information in a short period of time. And I know that might have been dry for some of you, but I kind of had a lot of fun doing it. And like I said, the handout's up here. Point number two. Now we'll get back to preachy a little bit. Okay? Point number two, we look at verse six and we see the nature of this mystery. The nature. Um, the verse itself, six, this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ through the gospel. I appreciate what Cheryl said. 
You know, Jews said anybody that's not a Jew is a Gentile. And we've seen through the time, you know, God created, then there was a flood, and then he had Abraham, and then we see all that, and we have Jews and Gentiles. And then when Christ comes, now we, we have this new body, this church called Christians. It's a whole new seed from Jesus. It's a whole new people, a whole new name. A kingdom. Our land's not here, it's in heaven. This will be our land for a thousand years though. And I believe in eternity we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. We, we, we've read about that in Revelation. And I believe that in order to understand the nature of this mystery, we have to stop looking at self-interest and say, I'd rather have Jesus. That's why I picked that song. Instead of saying, I'm a part of, I'm a Baptist, Instead of saying, I'm a Christian, we've missed the point. We get caught up in religion. We get caught up in opinions. We've talked about that. We get caught up in what I think, or maybe even what I've been told. And I believe that's one of the biggest things. I, I, I've, um, I've come to the conclusion as a pastor that helping somebody that has never been in church sometimes is easier than somebody that has been in a church and been misinformed. Because you've got to get them to say, yeah, I don't agree with that anymore. But we've always been told this. This is what we always do. And that was, you know, that's, you know, when I, you know, I see, when is it? Friday, I will have been your pastor for nine years. In those first year, maybe two years, I wish I had a $5 bill for every time somebody told me, that's not how we've always done it. We'd all go eat steak today. But see, the thing is, what does God's Word say? It's not what I've been told. The nature of how I look at the Gospel and the mystery is how I dig and understand God's Word. Do the study. Do the digging. Not only that, not when you, when you, you say, well, that's not what I thought. Well, that can't be right. See, that's what so many do. Well, that's just not written right. But here's the thing. If God's Word says it, that settles it. If something needs to be turned around, it would be us, not God's Word. So when I read it, I say, okay, I believe that, and I go forward. You see, but there comes a nature when we sit there. Sometimes we don't, our pride gets in the way. Sometimes our pride saying, well, I don't want everybody to think I was wrong, so I'm just going to keep on doing it that way. Instead of saying, Lord, I was wrong. Help me. And help me to help those around me that think the same way. Now, that's a bold statement. That's a bold request to ask God. You see, when we, when we don't look at God's Word and we don't allow the nature of the Word to point us to Jesus... Remember John 1.1? 1, 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we need to understand that mystery and, and, and the nature that we get there. Yeah, the Old Testament, it talks a lot about the Jews and how the Jews got here and all that. But the Old Testament is for the purpose of getting Jesus born a man here on earth. The Son of Man was coming to be a Savior, to be the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, that we might become Christians. You see, that's important that we get that, and the nature of that is that God didn't send Jesus just for the Jews. Not the Jews alone, but for anybody that would believe that Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ, the very truth that He told the woman at the well. You see, when he told her that, she says, she got excited. She ran down to the, to, to the city and said, he knows all. He knows, and I got a feeling, she says, I think he's the Messiah. He is the Son of God. He's the Christ that we've been waiting for. What if the rapture, is the rapture going to catch you by surprise? That's a good question. Some of you are saying, what's the rapture? Come and talk to me after church. We need to know that He's coming back. I'm looking forward to seeing Him face to face. 
I hope, really, I'd love to see it happen today so I didn't have to turn 62. Y'all all saying that. You're young. Grow wings and take off. Meet Jesus in the sky. That, that's going to be fun. You'll get that later, I guess. Amen. Amen. You see, Jesus, when He came, He was a better Adam. He's a new start. He's a new start for all of us. How many has your life changed since you learned who Jesus was? It's a new beginning. It's a new way of looking at the very promises that God has told us and mentioned to us in all of the Old Testament. It's not a mystery no more. It's the ministry. You see, <coughs> we need to be ready to tell. When Paul was sitting in front of King Agrippa, uh, trying to explain to him salvation, he was giving his testimony and he was trying to lead him to the Lord. Now, King Agrippa was not a Jew. In Acts 26, we read, To this day I have had uh, the help that comes from God. And so I stand here testifying both to small and great, saying nothing but the, what the prophets and Moses would, had, uh, said would come to pass that Christ must suffer and that being uh, the first to raise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. That's everybody. Cheryl hit the nail on the head. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. If you're not a Gentile, you're a Jew. And that's all a big thing. But it says everybody. Jesus didn't just die for that, but he was telling King Agrippa, you have hope as well. And that's the reason why I've pushed to be here today. And Luke, he, he writes it down. He says, Acts said, uh, Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house. He's talking about Zacchaeus. He's, he's gone to see Zacchaeus. He's a tax collector. And he says, since also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man come to seek and to save that which was lost. What was lost? We say that verse, but do we understand what was lost? Fellowship with God. The desire to know more about God. The, 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 the desire of Adam to, to meet God in the cool of the afternoon, to ask questions, to say, hey, show me what it is you want me to do. Lay on me the jobs you have in store. Do you know Adam named all the animals? See, I found that out by reading the Word. He was a smart man. And God said, hey, go ahead and read, uh, just, just name them all. I can see God come in with that platypus and say, what are you going to call this? He said, i got to think on that one a minute. Y'all are just not alive today. That was funny. We're, you know, as, as, as Larry the Cable Guy, he says, that's funny, I don't care who you are. You see, the lost means all creation. The lost was, we'd lost the relationship and the fellowship with God Almighty. The mystery is that God sent His Son to die on an old rugged cross that we might have eternal life and live forever with Him. I look forward to that day. But then thirdly, I want us to see the reason for the mystery. The reason for the mystery. Now, I'm going to explain this one in, 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 in two parts as well. But the timeline of, uh, and the nature that we've just talked about, it touches the humans, mankind. But creation, if we go back to Genesis 1, it said the heavens and the earth. And that's the reason why this verse sometimes catches many scholars sideways, scratching their heads and, and everything. But I believe it's very clear um, that he's not only talking about to humans, but he's also talking about angels and heaven and those things that are going on that we don't see. And, and, and the Word shows us that. But the first part of this is uh, the reason for the mystery is to... Um, to see God's wisdom that is ex 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 exhibited to all creation. And that includes the angels. The founder of salvation. You see, it's God's idea. It was God that set it in the garden. It was a mystery. We didn't understand. We didn't have all the answers. We didn't have that key piece of the puzzle. We didn't have Jesus in the Old Testament. But verse 10 says, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might no, now be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. We don't scratch our head on that because we're not in heavenly places, which I believe we can be because this is the kingdom of God if we're part of it and we're here 
we, you know, an embassy is part of that kingdom. But even Jesus, it says that he said it in, said in the heavenlies, the heavenly places. But this whole thing of the mystery, the whole subject of the gospel, the angels are very much in, interested in this as well. And scripture shows us that. And, uh, and I believe in, if we go to Hebrews chapter 2, for it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, what is man, that you be mindful of him or the son of man that you could care for him. Sounds like an angel being a little bit, why are you, why are you picking them over us? It says, you made him a little lower than angels and you have crowned him with the glory and honor and putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to Him, He left nothing outside His control. Heavens, plural, and earth. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to Him. I'm sometimes glad we can't see everything that's going on in the cosmos. I'm glad we can't see the, the, the battle that goes on over our heads most days. It says, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might, that he might taste death for everyone. See, Christ died that we might live. He, was, he, he received the wrath of God so that we could receive the peace of God. I believe it's under, that for us to understand and see the reasoning behind this and that the angels themselves think about this for a moment. Satan and his fallen angels, God prepared a place for them. They don't get a second chance. We do. I don't understand that. I look forward to seeing how it all comes to be when I get to heaven. And I believe that we will. And he will show us this. But I believe the angels are very much interesting and long for the chance that we have. Amen. I believe we take for granted how God has blessed us, how Jesus, he didn't come as an angel, did he? He came as a man to show us that it could be done, to show us how the mystery was being resolved in a way that the kingdom that we look for is to come. First, you know, Peter. Peter was a, he, he said a lot of things, but I believe Peter, I, I mean, when we read this passage here, you say, well, God put a, give him a big helping of understanding. Because I would have never looked or thought about it this way, but here's what Peter says concerning this salvation. Remember, we're talking about the founder of salvation. The prophets who prophesied <coughs> about the grace, the Old Testament, we were talking about that, that was in, uh, to be yours, searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person in the time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating uh, when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and was sub sub subsequent glory he's talking about all the things of the old testament he talked about this there was one coming there's one that's going to die there's one that's going to shed his blood there's there's a kingdom coming then all these different characters i tried to give you in point one he emphasized christ in every one of their lives and that they were an example of what we have to look forward to with the key of the mystery and that is the ministry of god the gospel in jesus christ and it goes on to say, it was revealed to them that they were uh, serving not themselves, but you. They had to come to that realization or they would have been, they would have went to the grave undone. Everything that happened was to get it to us, the gospel to us. In the things that have new, uh, now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, and then there's a comma there, and it says, things into which angels long to look. We sing that song, Count Your Many Blessings. I started to put that one in the, the arrangement. Name them one by one. 
When we think of the blessings, do we thank God for them? When we think of the blessings, do we think what it took to get that blessing to us? The, the, the event that Andy and I went to Thursday was talking about praying through Scripture. And I can see myself now saying, Thank you, Abraham. All that trial, all that you went through, that a Jew could be born the Son of Man. I believe that when we look at the timeline, we look at the nature and how important it is, that we can sit down and very understandably see how the angels would love to have been a part of this other than just being messengers. I believe that we have a second thing that we have to look at this, and that is that God's wisdom is experienced by us the church, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Verses 11 and 12 says this, this was according to the internal, eternal purpose that he was realized in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access, and I love this, with confidence through our faith in him. See, confidence only comes when you know what you're talking about. Amen? Confidence comes when you have a life-changing experience with Jesus. Confidence comes when you have read the Word, and you've memorized some words, and you've, you've put it together that you say, this is what I'm going to live by. Then and only then can we have confidence in the Word of God. So many people I talk to say, yeah, that's the Bible, that's God's Word. Well, tell me your favorite verse. And they'll quote John 3.16 or mutter through something. But if this is so important that you have the confidence that you know that the mystery, you know the answer to the mystery, and if somebody asks you for the answer for the mystery of the hope that's in you, could you tell them how you got to the place that you can say, I have confidence in God. You see, we, we like to say mystery. We like to just hold on to the questions. Well, the preacher will tell us one day what that means. I love it when people come and say, you know, I was reading this week, and this is what I, I found. And then we have a conversation and let the Holy Spirit lead where it may. But see, the point is we have confidence in what we're learning. Who saves us? Jesus, right? But better yet, i got confidence. I don't worry about dying. Yeah, I'm getting closer and closer to that day. And some of y'all are closer than I am, by the way. Y'all got that one. I'm envious in a way. See, the thing is, one day I'm either going to die or I'm going to be raptured out. And I get to see Jesus. You see, I have confidence in that meeting that it's going to take place. And there's a lot of people that can't explain how they can know that. So Paul, he's bringing out, he told us last week, there is a proclamation. We need to know about this mystery. But today I want us to understand the purpose of that is that we understand there's a timeline and there's a lot of time passed between creation and where we're at today. And I need to do a little study and I've got the, I've got the instruction manual right in front of me. Let me study a little bit. And then when I see that, I'll see the, the, how I'm supposed to act the nature of how I take God's Word and use it to all people, that Jesus came as a Savior and that He's soon returning as a King. And with that all being said, we can look there and see the reasons. But it says in Hebrews chapter 12 we read, I believe it was Luke that wrote this. He might have been quoting Paul as he would write it, but... Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, I believe that's the angels and those that have gone on before us. Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, 
and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. See, I ask this question. If, if, if we don't have enough faith in our salvation, and you say, why would you say that? Because I believe there's a lot of Christians that don't have enough faith in their salvation. We'll come down and say, Lord, save me. I don't want to go to hell. But we'll not go to the Lord for how do we take the next step when we leave this place. We won't go to the Lord when we're looking for a job. I don't worry about things. Might not be fun. Might not be a party, so to speak. But you see, I'm, I'm, I'm in the control of Jesus. He's my Lord. He's in charge. And if He's taking something away from it, it means He's got better for me. Amen? Hallelujah. I remember giving up an old lifestyle that I can be happy now, happier than I've ever been in all of my life. Because I'm looking at the timeline of what it is that I'm living for. That's Jesus. Do I have enough faith that I'm willing to do the studying? Have I got enough faith that I'm going to make sacrifices to be at church so that I can be with my brothers and sisters that are going through the same struggles that I am, that can edify and lift me up? I told you it's a little more preachy in this part. You see, I think we need to challenge one another. And if we have enough faith that we'll dig and we'll ask the, the questions, we can, we can get the answers. God will give us the answer. You know, if somebody asks somebody, you know, if somebody, one person comes up and asks me something, I'll try to make time for them. But you know, if there's five or six or more of you come up and ask me a question, hey, 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 this is important. See, together when we come together and say, Lord, we don't understand this, can you give us the answers? I think he'll give us the answers. You see, but that's having faith in the Word. That's having faith in what Jesus did in the Word. And that's having faith that He's coming back like it says in the Word. See how it's all hinged together? That timeline. But the word that Paul used here is to experience. You mean to tell you how you really share somebody how to get through a problem? It's when you've experienced that problem. You've experienced having to dig for the answers in God's Word. And you're able to go to somebody and say, You know, when I was fighting the very same thing, this was the passage that God gave me. My Sunday school teachers told me this verse, and it helped me. And then my church rallied around me, and they prayed for me, and they helped me through the struggle. But you know what? I come out on the other end, and far better than what I was. See, that's what experience is. And that's what the angels want. They see how God bends over backwards to help us. And so many of us won't spend the time to experience what it is God has for us. So I'd ask you, do you understand the mystery and how and why God uses the church for the gospel? I believe it's... It, we just need to understand that we're family through Jesus. We're Christians. And we have a job to do. And I pointed that out last week. But to understand the job, we have to do a little bit of digging. We have to understand the mystery in a way that we understand why it is that everything has happened the way it has. So my application, I wrote it in your, and I'm, I'm thinking very serious about taking the application off your bulletin so you'll write them down. I think you'll, you'll remember them better. But here's what I wrote down. As all of creation watches world events, all of creation, have angels, everybody, they're watching how things are going on earth. Let the church share the main event, Jesus. Amen. If we understand the timeline, we understand all that's gone into getting Jesus to this planet. And we understand that He's coming back. That is the main event. The coming event is His return to take us home, the church. There'll be some cleanup, about seven years worth. Go back to the book of Revelation. But then we're coming back to rule and reign with Him. 
Hallelujah. I look forward to that. Our glorified bodies. See, if we don't dig and find out the mysteries of these things, we won't know. That's the reason why so many are so, well, I'm a Christian. Come see my preacher. He'll, he'll, he'll tell you a little bit about what Bob, the Bible says. I want to challenge you to read the Bible. I want to challenge you to talk to God. See, God's talking to you. This is His Word. Amen. Talk to Him. And see what the Holy Spirit reveals to you. Amen. But we got a purpose, and that is to point people to the main event, and that's Christ's return. And there's some things that have to happen before then that we can help them with. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much. And I know I muddled through this, but I pray that your words would be loud. Each person heard what you needed them to hear. Let it change us. Let, us, let it motivate us to do the things that you need us to do for the purpose in which you've allowed us to be alive. You've chose us. You've blessed us. And I just pray we would do our part. Now, Lord, I also pray for those that maybe don't know you. They don't understand all this. But I pray that there was enough said today that they would have a need, see their need for a Savior who is Jesus. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would work in our hearts, that nobody would leave here the same person that they came, that we would all be diligent about the very things you lay on our heart. Let us not fight through those things and say, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. Let us be earnest, fervent about the very work that you've given us. Thank you. And we ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Now he's going to come and lead us in a hymn of invitation.